Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and I think it's about time we sorted out this horribly ugly area near the door of the Lego room. There. For too long now, you've looked around my lovely harbour, looked along at the train tracks and the warehouse and the lovely double bridge, uh, and then you get this fantastically ugly cross-sectional view of, well, innards kind of supporting raised areas, bits of wood, uh, and even this old crossroads base plate. And wow, it doesn't look very good, does it? And it's the, pretty much the first thing you see when you come into the Lego room. So it's long overdue, some work. Uh, and before I started, I already got rid of the crossroad base plate just to sort of even up this edge. Uh, and I was going to add these eight by 16 plates to kind of hang over the edge of the table, but I decided just to reorder my base plates and actually have them overhanging by about kind of six studs because I thought it'd be a lot neater uh, and I don't think there'll be anything too heavy right on the edge to sort of make it bend or bow over so I don't think that will be a problem. So what are we going to be doing in this area? Uh, well basically I want to do three things. Uh, it's not a huge space but nonetheless I'm going to cram them all in next to each other. The main one is on the same level as the train tracks uh, and kind of will be here, here and here. And that will be a cargo area of which this vehicle is kind of the first element. Uh, and that will be allowing cargo to come off our cargo line from an incredibly long cargo train uh, and then be put onto trucks and so on. So I'll have some sort of overhead cranes and stuff like that there. Uh, then I'm going to continue the cliffs that, well, would continue on from here. So they look much like we've got on the other side sort of all sort of like that uh, and up against them I'm going to have a Coast Guard station and that's going to be on two levels. Firstly the sort of bottom level uh, on the water itself uh, but then also on the higher level next to the cargo stuff so you kind of have to go through the cargo yard to get to it and then I thought I'd add a second kind of pirates theme uh, fort here and that'd be really quite a small fort, nowhere near as big as the El Dorado Fortress. But it's often the case in real life that when you've got a great big fortress on one side of an estuary or river or bay, like we've got here for Brit Bay, then you'd have kind of a smaller auxiliary one on the other side, just with a few cannon in, uh, so you could cover all approaches. So essentially, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and uh, I think the first step is to try and sort of lay out some of the more significant elements of that build uh, so we know what we're doing a bit more accurately. Okay, so the entrance to the cargo area will be where those one and two stickers are, representing two kind of loading bays. And the first one will go all the way along to the end, right to the very end where the bridge starts. And I've just got all these very precariously sort of held up as a sort of holding pattern. Uh, and then the area where the truck is will be filled in as well. And right up to here, we'll have more cliffs kind of forming a cliff wall, like I said before. So that gives us kind of this two uh, 16 by 16 sort of square area to make into a Coast Guard station. And the first sort of half of that, I think I'm going to fill up with one of these slipways, like I've used elsewhere in my harbour area. Uh, they're from all the old sort of town sets, sometimes railway station platforms and all the rest of it. And I thought that would be good there, because although I'm going to have a large uh, Coast Guard ship, I do want to have some sort of access for kind of uh, a smaller craft or something like that to help save lives and all the rest of it. Uh, then there I can have kind of more of these sort of lattice plates, 8 by 8 to kind of make a uh, sort of mezzanine level that will have the building on it. And that can have kind of a stairway from the higher level to that lower level, kind of like that. So that will be a building there. Uh, and then I think I'll have my little fort, very small and very cute, kind of on the end there, kind of perched in position. And it needn't be very big at all. I mean, in real life, it would have several cannon, I'm sure. But I just want it to look very much like the uh, pirate set, Cannon Cove 6266. Uh, and I recently got the beautiful panel pieces, albeit in yellow rather than the white ones that made up that set, to kind of build a very similar sort of setup 
over here with the cannon sort of sticking out. So that's what I think I'll do there. Uh, and I was very much inspired to do that, not by that set actually, but by a real life small fort, uh, which is in Dartmouth in Devon, which is in the southwest of England. And there's a fort called Bayard's Cove Fort, uh, which Mrs. Hood and I visited in 2016. Uh, and that is really tucked into the shore, uh, all amongst other buildings, as you can see from these photographs, and helps protect the estuary, in that case of the River Dart, uh, from, well, the French, the Spanish, and even pesky pirates <laughs> throughout the ages, uh, since the early 16th century. So yeah, it's been doing it for 500 years, and I kind of think of this little fort on this side, or a fortlet, as I've been calling it, because it's so small, uh, combined with the El Dorado Fortress on the other side, might have been protecting the entrance to Brick Bay in Brick Nottingham for a similar time period uh, against, well, probably again, the French, <laughs> the Spanish, and pesky pirates. <laughs> in fact, they've still got a bit of a job with pesky pirates at the moment, uh, with some in the rowboat trying to steal some treasure. So, yeah, I think that's very appropriate. So, yeah, uh, there we go. We've got a higher level, a kind of straddling level for the Coast Guard, and then just tucked right into this corner, right against the wall of the room, this tiny little fortlet. Yeah, I think it will be very good and very dense, just how I like it. Good, good. Well, I've put the first section of cliffs in and I've used a few different types of burp. Basically, the big one. I've got a big one in the old grey coming up. I've used one of the ones with a kind of mottled green on to represent some sort of slime from the sea and all the sea spray and all that. And then I've used one the inside out way, kind of facing backwards, so it can act as kind of the back wall of our fort. Uh, so basically I'll be building the fort into that. I've just kind of put this here as a temporary sort of uh, measure. So that looks good. It's kind of square at the moment. But I'm going to be sort of roughing it up with all sorts of different bricks uh, soon. And then that will go right on there and represent the sort of cargo area. So you can kind of see how that's going to look a little bit. It will go uh, one more on, on this side. Uh, and then just to bridge... The gap, I'm going to use some 4 by 8 plates to kind of go on there uh, because a plate built onto bricks and a base plate resting on bricks is exactly the same height so they'll marry up absolutely perfectly when it's pushed down properly. Uh, I've got 6 brick height underneath that uh, higher level compared with the lower level which is the same as I've done all along the beach and all the rest of it in the boardwalk and what have you. So yeah that's the sort of start. I think I'll just keep going a little bit more uh, and then I need to support underneath all of here properly so it's strong and for that I'll be using all of Cadge's spare bricks that he sent me because there's still absolutely loads left. It was very very generous of him so yeah I'll be making all of that nice and firm so we can build things on there as well and push down. Cool. Support structure done and it is pretty solid. I think you can see that. Oh, not moving or going anywhere. And I've used absolute fistfuls of the bricks provided by Cadge. So uh, that's been really useful yet again. I'm glad to say I've got a load left still as well for future things. So that is absolutely brilliant. Uh, but the real proof of the pudding will be when I put the base plates in position along there, there and there and I haven't finished this edge here this will be uh, blended into what was already there but I haven't done that yet uh, and indeed it is looking quite square at the moment but I believe it will look a lot better when everything's in position so don't worry about that and then the final one there and then hey hey that's looking pretty good, isn't it? It actually looks a bit like a cargo area already, to be quite fair, on the top there. That's looking really good. Yeah, I like that. So it's all very well supported. I can push down on absolutely every area. It'll need attaching from the top as well, of course. And then it will be really, really robust for building on. Fantastic. Uh, now, I've got to concentrate and focus for the rest of today. 
because I haven't got enough time to do all of the cargo area by any means. I don't think I've got enough time to do all of the Coast Guard station either. So if I'm going to complete one thing in its entirety, I better focus on the small fort or fortlet, as I've been calling it, which I think will look really cute, sort of buried, uh, sorry, built up against that cave that I've made there. Yeah, I think that looked good. So I'm going to do that, uh, and then we'll have one edge at least completely done. Okay, well I've put in the foundations of the fortlet and the base of some of the walls and I've tried to use as many different greys and even sand green in there as much as possible like these different greens to try and bring a different flavour uh, for the coastal bit that's getting hit by the waves and all the rest of it. Uh, so that looks really good and if you're wondering what these one by one black round uh, bricks are for then you obviously haven't fired one of these cannons before <laughs> because basically they're the ammunition They're the cannonballs you put one of those in there you pull that back and you catapult it across the room So it needs some in there now whether we'll actually be able to see these cannonballs when the whole thing's built is well Another question quite frankly. I, I doubt it somehow <laughs> But you know me I like to have all the details even if it's on the inside and another thing that sort of falls into that category is putting this arch here, for example. I'm going to have the same arch on both sides, but uh, the one on the far side we may never see. And I'm being careful to have the nice panel with all of the exposed brickwork on this side, because, well, it's better, isn't it? So we definitely want that. That looks really bright. And there's the arch on the outside as well, looking really good. So this uh, fort is essentially abandoned, uh, and it might be a tourist destination, I suppose, but it is stuck as it is uh, right next to this cargo yard. So basically it probably doesn't get too many visitors. And there's the gun port. So I'm just gonna put the gun in position while I still can. And I went for the red gun carriage because I thought that was a bit brighter. We'll be able to see it a bit better. And then, oh, the top bit there. So that really does look like Cannon Cove, doesn't it? Uh, so yeah, I need to do the roof next and it will basically have that sort of battlements bit on the front. But yeah, already it's looking rather nice, if you ask me. Love that yellow. Well, all right, all right. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? I'll just finish off the battlements, making sure the front ones and the back ones kind of completely link together. And I think it looks really good. The yellow and the white of that whole sort of pirate's line for the... Uh, what they call the Imperial Guard or something like that. Anyway, the sort of goody soldiers is absolutely great. I love it. And the bits of sort of red brick showing through just really give it a bit of interest. And the cannon poking its nose out, brilliant. Now, I could uh, get kind of a reenactor uh, at post in here for the tourists. But as I say, I'm not sure. I might just keep it abandoned. But one thing I definitely am going to add from my collection is this flag with the crossed cannon, because that would very much seem to be appropriate for the uh, original inhabitants of this. There must have been this sort of royal artillery or something like that. And I can put that blowing towards my harbour, which is the direction all of my flags in my city go, because that must be where the wind is blowing. So point that that way, then that adds a little bit more red as well. So yeah, that looks really interesting and nice. So there is the first bit of our new section done and isn't it an improvement from where we started with bits of wood sticking out and bits of random base plate showing. Now at least it's squared off and we've got something really fantastic to look at. And can we see the cannonball inside? Mm, no. <laughs> can we see the arch? Arch number two through the window. I'm just peering through. Uh, kinda. <laughs> but only when I really, really crane my neck to sort of squeeze in. But um, anyway, I still love it. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Looking at the same panorama that we started off today with, the view is a lot better, isn't it? Wow. That is quite a lot of progress, actually. I know a lot of it is just flat ground now, but it all is raised up to the right level, much like uh, my boardwalk on this side or the marina on that side. If you haven't seen those videos, they're quite similar uh, sort of structural ones if you're interested. But yeah, we've got the cliffs with a little bit more to do to sort of link it up to what we did before. Uh, the slipway and all of the coast guard to add and all of the wonderful cargo yard action up there, of course, in, in time. Uh, but the one thing we really have finished is our cute fortlet and I'm so happy with that. Using those old vintage panel pieces and that flag 
I really, really like it. The colour scheme is just perfect. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. Do tell me what you think of this and whether I should make it into a tourist attraction or just have it as a sort of redundant part of history. Let me know what you think. Uh, and if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, well, do you know what? I'm quite tempted to continue with this area because I've really quite enjoyed it. It is really nice to see such big progress uh, in one session, I must say. So that uh, always encourages me to do more. But uh, let me know what you think. I'm sure there's quite a lot of you still want me to get on with the fairground, <laughs> as per. But uh, that's another possibility. So until all of that, see you 